I'd like to begin by explaining how we work with units in equations and formulas. We need units to describe our systems quantitatively, and we use mathematics to describe quantities, the relationships between different things. So it's only logical that units belong in mathematical formulas. Here I'll explain how that works, and I'll begin my perennial insistence that you always include units when you use formulas. Please, please, please. The reason I'm telling you all this is that using units not only makes sense, but it provides a very useful and easy tool to help you understand physics. Units tell you and remind you what kind of quantity you are dealing with, and they give meaning to the numbers. It's rare for a pure number to mean something. Usually you need the unit as well to tell you what it is. On top of that, minding units is easy once you get used to it, and it's extremely useful. Minding your units can help you to check your work and to make sense of and keep track of what you've done to solve a physics problem. Here I'll introduce you to my friend the frog. Eating the bullfrog is my expression for talking about math because, well, if you eat a live bullfrog first thing in the morning nothing worse will happen to you for the rest of the day. If I talk about the math first then nothing worse will happen to you when I use the math talking about physics. Anytime I have some physics that needs a new math concept to describe, I usually have a little frog to indicate that that's what I'm doing. Then nothing worse will happen after that, right? So here's the primary concept I want you to take away from this lesson. You can use units in mathematical formulas exactly the same way that you use variable symbols. You can add terms together as long as the terms have the same common factor and differ only in the coefficient. So as 3x plus 4x is 7x, 3 seconds plus 4 seconds is 7 seconds. Now, since subtraction is just generalized addition, this applies to subtraction as well. You can also divide terms with units, and they don't even need to be in the same units. So, just as 6x divided by 2y gives you 3x over y, you can say 6 coulombs divided by 2 seconds is 3 coulombs per second. If you can divide, well, of course you can multiply. 3a times 4b is 12ab. So 3 meters per second times 4 kilograms is going to give you 12 kilogram meters per second. When you see units multiplied by each other, which is what I call compound units, you can immediately take a clue that it's a quantity of one thing extended by another. For instance, areas are distance times a distance and volumes are distance cubed, extending into more dimensions, 2 and 3. Other units that we commonly multiply indicate accumulating an effect over time or distance. Or an effect can be scaled by how much or how many parts are participating. For instance, the area of a rectangle is its length times its width. So certainly 3 meters times 4 meters gives 12 meters squared. But length and width don't need to be concrete distances. Here we imagine a task that requires the effort of three workers for four hours, working together. If these workers are interchangeable and independent, granted these are big ifs, but bear with me, then we can quantify the total effort for the job in terms of the area of this rectangle. That's 3 workers times 4 hours, which is 12 workers times hours, or 12 worker hours. Now ratio units, units divided by another unit, we commonly encounter when we're interested in rates of change, such as meters per second, or when we want to factor out the effect of some extended quantity as with concentration being moles per liter. Some ratios can be interpreted in both ways, such as miles per gallon. For example, a baby's increase in mass over time could be quantified as an annualized growth rate. So we have here a starting mass, 3.2 kilograms at some initial time, birth, and then hopefully another larger mass at a later time. So we have those two points here, and the growth rate is going to be the slope of the line connecting those two points. The slope is 
the rise, 5.4 kilograms, divided by the run, 0.75 years, for an annualized growth rate of 7.2 kilograms per year. Of course, babies don't really grow at a constant rate for nine months. Another skill that I really want to emphasize, because we'll be using it all year in this class, is doing unit conversions. You might be used to doing unit conversions casually, such as to convert inches to feet divided by 12. I want you to slow down now and take a good look at what unit conversions really are, so that when we do unit conversions that are substantially more challenging, you'll know exactly how to do them. Here I'll start with a simple example of converting between meters and inches. We start with the equality that 39.37 inches is the same thing as one meter. What's on one side of the equation is exactly the same as what's on the other side. From that, we can make two different conversion factors, both equal to one. Since anything divided by itself is one, either side of the equality divided by the other side gives us one. 39.37 inches per one meter is one, or one meter per 39.37 inches is one. These expressions of one are our conversion factors. Which one of these we want to use depends on what we have and on what we want. So let's say we start with a distance of 72 inches, which we want to express in meters. If we multiply this quantity by one, certainly we haven't changed anything. It's still the same quantity. Now, we want meters, which we don't have, and we don't want inches, which we do have. So we substitute one of these conversion factors for one, and the factor that we want is the one that cancels out the inches by having them in the denominator and gives us meters. So that one that we're gonna use is the one meter divided by 39.37 inches. The algebra of the unit gets rid of the inches and gives us meters, and the division of the numbers, 72 divided by 39.37, gives us 1.829, and so totally we have 1.829 meters. So our final answer, which is exactly the same thing as 72 inches, is 1.829 meters. It's the same quantity expressed in different numbers and different units. Now I'd like you to practice this. I'm not asking you to tell me the answers. These are simple enough that whatever sloppy way of conversion you're already comfortable with will probably give you the right answer. But here I want you to set up the conversions using the conversion factors equal to one that I just described. 